Welcome to the Moving Up podcast, and this is Christina Hawkins, the owner of Moving Marketing Results. Uh, Today, we're going to focus on a vital aspect of your website's success, and that would be user experience, or for short, UX. And I will share with you how to make sure your site is not just functional, but really a joy for your customers to visit and use. So let's dive in. User experience is essentially how visitors feel when they navigate to your website. It's a crucial part of the relating uh, portion that I have when I talk about core strategy, core marketing strategy, the C O R E cultivate your leads, originate your content, relate with your audience and expand to grow. And if you just go back to episode two, I go into more depth about what the core marketing strategy is. Now back to websites, good UX means a smooth navigation. It has valuable information. It's enjoyable to visit. And what we'll do is, or what I will do is I'm going to break down these elements. So here's the thing. Websites are essentially the core or the foundation of any marketing strategy. It, it kind of lays the baseline. It's got your brand, your messaging, your team and it. And I'm not saying it's the end all be all of any marketing strategy. Not at all. Uh, I'm not saying you have to have this fully developed 100 page website with a full. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying from from a, a moving company standpoint, your website tends to, is usually the first thing people have some kind of interaction with you. It could also be on a social media platform, but typically what you're doing is you're driving them back to the website to get more information and learn more about you. So when that happens, you want to make sure that the first thing that they see is the navigation. You've got about three seconds really to kind of impress upon somebody what it is that you do. I would say now it's probably down to two seconds to be very clear who you are, what you do and why I should choose you. And if, if, You've got um, a homepage sometimes with this slider that just kind of rotates around. People just love these sliders. And I'm not a fan of them. I don't think anybody ever really watches those. If you were to look at some of the tests, especially on a mobile device, nobody's going to watch your automatic scrolling thing. I just feel like people use their thumb on a mobile and they're going to scroll up or down as needed. So when I come to your site and I've got something that's kind of taking me away from the attention of what I need to do, We've, we've kind of already failed. So I want to make sure first you've got kind of a call to action, either call, fill, form, subscribe, whatever that is, it needs to be upfront. I would say next, you're going to have to make sure that you have a really good navigation. Uh, there are one page sites. I don't believe in them. I don't think that they're a good for moving companies. I'm going to preface that again for moving companies a one page site will not cut it. You need to have some navigation. It's like a roadmap of your website. It needs to be clear. It needs to be intuitive. I need to be able to find it quickly. Don't hide it. I'm not a fan of the that what we call the hamburger menu, the three lines on a desktop. I am totally get it from a mobile standpoint. It's required on a mobile, but on a desktop, I'm always like, where is the menu? <laughs> and it's like hidden somewhere in the upper right corner typically, but... I'm just not a fan of it. Once you have this menu, is it easily understandable? Can I navigate where I need to be? Does it have the essential information like your services, your contact details, the the service areas? You want a seamless navigation. That's critical for keeping your potential customers engaged on your website. Of course, you're gonna have internal links. You're gonna have areas as I scroll down, there might be other navigation items, especially on the footer. You really need to make sure that menu is visible and easily understood. Now let's talk about page speed and mobilization. We're going to get a little technical here. Even though we've all got pretty pretty fast websites, uh, I'm sorry, fast internet connections, some of them are broadband, even even your your phone usually we've got it's pretty speedy especially if you're around your office or at your home you're typically attached to a wi-fi but anywhere if you're running around it, it could be hit or miss i know here in houston it's definitely hit or miss i may get one or two bars so you still have to make sure your website loads fast google is actually very clear about that they actually have all kinds of tools out there to double check is your website loading and they'll split it out between a mobile performance and a desktop performance and both need to be uh, performing well. 
So what does it mean to perform well? We're, we're all expecting two to three second downloads and any unexpected delays on moving day. So it's not really kind of a fun experience to have a very slow website. There are tools out there. Google's got some of the better ones and I prefer to use those. There's um, uh, other ones out there that like GT metrics give you a score and give you super detailed information about why they came up with that score. So we use both on the Google page speed website that's kind of the determining factor, right? It's, they've got the mobile version and a desktop version and you'll find a way of, you can put your URL in there and you'll see two grades. If you're about 85 and above, you're okay. If you're 90 and above, you're excellent. We usually see people have problems on the mobile side of it. So we just want to make sure that you do spend some time on that mobile. You want to get it up 85 and above if you've got certain tools in there, embedded code, tracking, all that, it's going to be really tough to get to like 95 and above. So if I, my feeling is 85 and over, we're good. But also looking at it from how fast is it the first iteration, the first piece of content that shows it. Once that shows, it's the first paintful is what they call it. Users already have an indication that it is loading. If it's blank, for two seconds, that's not good. So you want to go through and find out why is it take so long for that very first element to show. Now it should look quickly and it should be responsive. That's also part of your performance. When we have items uh, on a desktop, they don't always have to be displayed on a mobile device. Again, remember the slideshow. If someone really, really says, I want my slideshow, well, all right. But we will hide it on a mobile device so that it doesn't slow down the website and take away from, it could be an organic, SEO organic issue if you have a poor performing, slow, clunky website. It could be a turn off to your customers and it will for sure have some unexpected delays when they're trying to reach you. On a responsive format on a website, I really prefer to have the phone number always visible. I'm not a real fan of people filling out the form. I just don't think that it's fast enough. People want answers now. Uh, usually they fill out the form at 10 o'clock at night and by the next morning they've either talked to somebody else or they've changed their mind. I prefer on a mobile device having that phone number at the very bottom. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about content, the meat of your site, the which is part of UX. It's not just kind of what you say, but how you say it. Your website really needs to address your customer's needs. It needs, um, it needs to be very direct. I don't really like hiding things or mincing words. Do you have the kind of information on your website about every little service that you provide? Uh, moving fragile items, special services like storage. Does your content provide answers in a clear, empathetic, but authoritative manner. What I mean by that is, again, clarity in your speak. Don't assume everybody speaks your language. And what I mean by speaking your language, I'm not necessarily talking about, do they speak Spanish, French, German, or something like that. It's more from a locality perspective if you're Upper East versus the South versus the West, everybody kind of has um, their own kind of cultural local language. I'm always of the opinion to write content that a 10th grade high school student can understand. So be clear, be succinct. But I think also what people forget is in different parts of the U.S., we all have different, what a different idea is of different services. The more and more I learn about moving companies and especially learning in different areas in the Northeast versus say somewhere in New Mexico or even Houston, Florida, the vernacular, the terms are different. And so depending on where you live, you want to be careful that you're using the words of that locality. Just as a real quick example, if we're going to have a locations page or a long distance page, let's say I have a service, we do long distance. What does that mean for somebody in Boston, long distance could mean, um, you know, all the way to Florida, or it could mean, you know, 250 miles up to Maine, New York, 
Chicago is long distance. In Houston, Texas, it takes three days to cross Texas. Long distance is very different in our minds. A two hour, four hour drive to Dallas is okay. Is that long distance? It depends. Other parts of the content on your site, I would recommend being as specific as possible that you can set yourself apart from your competition. On your storage page, do you have cameras? Uh, can I access the storage myself? Uh, is the storage one story, two story? Is it temporary? How long can I have it? Is it a year? What's the minimum? What's the maximum? And that goes for you know piano moving or antique furniture moving, like I was mentioning. Is that something that you do or is that part of the larger move? Everybody wants to have all these individual pages but then they find out people call, I just want to move my piano. You know, some of them are like, great. Some moving companies are like, no, we're a full service moving company. It's not what we do. But you have a piano moving page. Do you have partial packing options? Do you have apartment packing? Do you have downsizing? Do you have senior moves? Be specific of all the different types of moves that might be part of somebody's customer journey, something that they're looking for and looking for answers. You can add frequently asked questions on each of these service pages, then add authority building photos. Again, always looking for real photos of you guys to add to that reliability and transparency on each of these pages. So we have a packing page, show packing photos. If you are on a loading page, show loading page photos. If you have residential, apartment, office, try and create photos for each one of these pages. Stop buying stock photos with guys in blue jumpers. Real guys wearing your shirts, your hats, your truck. If you're renting a truck, that's fine. You can kind of finagle the camera, but just see, I need to see that real actual people doing work. My point being here, don't just follow what your competitors are doing or what other websites, other moving companies are doing. And, you know, they've got a long distance page. They've got a furniture moving page. Make sure that that reflects exactly what it is that you will do. Your website must reflect who your company is, the culture, what it is you do very, very clearly. And without trying to come up with pages and content that I see people say, well, we'll get a lot of traffic if we just create this content, but it's not the right kind of traffic. I prefer it if we have website pages that are, again, concise and truly reflects your brand and what you do. I want to touch on accessibility as part of the user interface. Your website should be accessible to everyone, including those with disabilities, maybe age issues. You know, I know of somebody that's over 40, I have to wear reading glasses sometimes. Sometimes these websites are really tiny, um, really tiny font. Maybe we've got gray. They kind of want to make it look kind of modern. So they have this white background with this gray text. That's very hard to read. Sometimes they use very small text. Don't forget to use alt text for your images. And that that's not just for SEO purposes. There are blind readers that read the context of the photo. So don't just spam fill alt text for your photos. Make sure it accurately describes the photo that's on it. I don't mind adding a key phrase in there, but be sure to describe uh, adding, for example, a photo of people loading a truck. Literally say that loading a truck in Boston, Massachusetts, loading a moving truck in Boston, Massachusetts. That's okay. That's a clear description of that photo. So there are tools out there you can use Just search accessibility checker, website accessibility checkers, and it'll kind of give you some clues. Usually it is a color issue. There might be very hard to read text based on a background. Sometimes there's uh, maybe a form might not be accessible because you put instead of actually describing the field, you put it inside the field. There's just some, there's just little things like that to have to, to have to check. Another part of your website interface is including customer feedback. For sure, incorporate 
all of your reviews. It would be best if you had a, a tool that pulls in reviews automatically. So every time you get a Google review, it shows up on your website. There's a lot of tools out there. There's widgets that you can use. We have our own tool that pulls in Facebook and Google reviews automatically. If you can add video testimonials, those are the cream of the crop of video, I'm sorry, of reviews. It provides that real accurate social proof. It builds confidence in your company and the services that you provide. So make sure that these reviews are found easily. Like I said, I do like adding them to a special page, but even better if I could have special reviews and maybe manually add these to the, let's say of a moving page or a long distance page and somebody gave you a review that talks literally about each one of those services. That way, again, we're perpetuating the content itself, but we're providing social proof that this, that specific service did well for this customer. This customer was very happy with this, that service. So just to conclude, Think about the smaller changes you can make to your website that could have a good, a big impact on how customers interact with your website. A good UX can lead to much higher engagement, more inquiries, and ultimately more bookings for your moving services. So thanks for joining me today on Moving Forward. Next time, we'll explore more topics to help grow your moving business. This is Christina Hawkins wishing you success in creating a website that's not just a tool, but a true asset for your customers and your business. So I'll see you next time.